corn. Hi, this is Kay Ward, and this is your Dickman Farms Smart Gardening Tip. And this week, we wanted to chat with you a little bit about a little guy that's in a lot of trouble, and that's our native bees and honeybees. In the last few years, we've been seeing declines in these, um, our beneficials. They actually do us a huge, huge favor out there. It's estimated that about 100 different agricultural crops and some other crops, some fruits and nuts, are pollinated, and they're pollinated up to 80% by honeybees and other native bees. So it's really important. If you like to go to the store and get those pears or nuts or other things, we need to help them out, and there's little things that we can do at home to do that. And some of the things you can do is have a glorious flowering garden, so not too difficult, right? So I've chosen some plants here that are bee friendly, and by being bee friendly, they have a high nectar count, so there's a lot of nectar and pollen. Here's a lovely example on this black-eyed Susan. Here is the pollen on the top. You can see it, this nice bright yellow on the top here. It's a wonderful type of plant. It's easy for the bees to get to. It produces a reliable source. It's a very easy perennial to grow, which is always a boon. It's a good bloomer, so it's wonderful to see. We have also here, we have a broad range of when these different types of nectar source plants bloom. We have this, this is a salvia, and salvia actually blooms quite early in the season. If you trim it back, it'll bloom again. And if you trim it once more time, you get flowers again. So it's a wonderful thing that'll keep going through the season for you. We have a mid-season, the black-eyed Susans, or I'm sorry, the Shasta daisies here. They start to show up in the summer, as do these Coreopsis. They'll probably start end of May, June. Uh, we have um, some other beautiful color here that I threw these in because they're good for butterflies, and who doesn't want those? We have later season plants just starting, like this Russian sage over here, and Rose of Sharon. I've actually seen bumblebees so heavy in pollen, it's a wonder they can fly. So anyways, this is a wonderful long season of color to have in a garden. It helps out our beneficials um, to get them so that, that they're around for our future generations to come and that we always have beautiful producers that just by nature help us out. Um, the other thing that you can do in the garden is if you can, in some instances, step back and try not to use so many pesticides if you don't have to. Now certainly there's times when something's just getting devoured by maybe Japanese beetles that you might have to spray, but if you have one or two holes, you might find that that plant, if it's good and healthy through some fertilization or extra watering, it just says, it just sloughs them off. It's like you and I getting a cut. It's not going to kill us. It'll be okay. You don't need to treat. So make sure that you're paying attention to when and what you need to treat for, because most bees are very, very sensitive, and if you're spraying a lot, we can actually be doing them damage, and we want to try not to do that. Bees, well, I wouldn't recommend going up and petting one. If they're in your flower garden, they could care less about you. Most things from bees are accidental. You accidentally grabbed one they didn't know, so just keep in mind that they're out there doing their job for you and trying their best, so let's help them out if we can. If you have any further questions, please come on in and see us. We'd love to help you plan your gardens to help our friendly pollinators. So until we see you again, happy gardening.